All right, so in this walkthrough, I'm going to show you how to submit your code and what happens at that point. Okay, so so where are we at this point? Let me uh, let me run the grader, the, the local grader, um, and we'll see what happens, right? We'll, we'll see where we are. We'll see the score that we have that we expect. And then I'll show you how to submit your code for official grading. Because again, running this grader does not constitute submitting your code and it does not change your grade in the class. Now, uh, I have a couple of other uh, tabs open here. So I'm showing you um, on the lesson page, you can see at the bottom your submissions to, to the MP. There's also another place where you can see this, uh, which is, and this will eventually be linked off of um, the lessons themselves. Uh, and, and available to you on, on, the M, M, on the MP page. So here's another place. So on the MP sort of summary for Checkpoint Zero, you can see information about your submissions at the bottom. Okay, so now let's submit our code. So you'll, you'll see I'm still running the grader. It's still thinking away and, 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 and grading the project, right? Um, this can be a good thing to do before you uh, submit your code for official grading, just so you can kind of compare um, oh, sorry. Okay, so I had run this before and I have to commit first, right? So let's actually do that and, and we'll see how that, how that works. So we're using a, a version control system called Git, which is completely ubiquitous in software development. Um, the idea here is that, um, and we have a whole tutorial and a lot of online documentation about Git that you can uh, look at and there's a lot of great information about Git on the web. Um, but the idea with Git is that there's, a, there's this sort of process for saving your code, which is called committing, right? So you've made a set of changes, you've saved those files locally, but those changes aren't yet part of the official history of the project until you do what's called a commit. And a commit can include multiple files, right? So let's go ahead and start that. There's a couple ways to do that here. One is to use this shortcut over here. Another is to go to the git window and just hit commit. And there's a keyboard shortcut there as well. So when I open up the commit dialog, you'll see that Git is gonna tell me what files I've changed. In this case, the only change I made since I received the starter code is that I put my ID into id.txt. And down here, it actually, will show me, it actually will show me what changed, right? This is really useful as you start to make more complicated changes to your project, just to review like what happened, okay? As part of the commit, you wanna write a message. Right? And the idea here is that for people that come back later and look at the project, this is information about what happened at this point. Like, why did you make these changes? Right? And all I'll say is uh, my ID to the project or something like that. This doesn't have to be a long-winded description. Um, it can just be something short. Right? Um, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit commit. Um, now. With Git, committing is a local operation. So there's, this is not equivalent to submitting. Um, all I've done is commit locally. And in fact, if I go over to my, uh, let me open up my project on github.com, you'll see, and I'll, I'll reload this to make sure that, uh, you'll see that there's only been one commit and it was 15 hours ago. That's when I uh, started the project, accepted the GitHub Classroom in invitation. So there's a separate step I have to complete, which is called pushing. So when you commit, it makes a, it, it, it sort of saves that information on your own machine. When you push, you actually send that information to github.com and that's what triggers grading. If I go back over here and look at the MP page, you'll see that there's no submissions yet, right? I haven't triggered official grade. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, there's this uh, keyboard shortcut right here that it starts the push dialog. You can do this as part of committing. So you saw when I committed, there was a little spinner there. There were more options. One of them is to do a commit and push at the same time, right? But you can also do them separately. So you'll see here that I'm going to push one commit to github.com. And now let's go ahead and, and, and perform that push, right? So I'm going to hit push here. Um, and now when I go back, right? you'll see that I have a commit that's being graded. Now this can take a few minutes and it usually does take a few minutes. If you push right around the deadline for a checkpoint, it may take even longer than that because you know what we're doing is we're downloading your code, we're checking out this commit, we're running the same grader that you run locally, but you know this is a slow process. It can take you know a, you know, a minute or two to grade each submission from each student in the class. And if there's a bunch of you that are all submitting right around the deadline, sometimes this, the, the, the queue may get up to be you know, hours, right? 
So my, what I would encourage you to do is submit early and often, right? If you want to avoid this, if you want better feedback on your commits, right? If you want to know how you're doing and, and make sure that your score is exactly where uh, you want it to be, you should uh, push early, right? Because before the deadline, typically things will move more quickly, right? Okay, so I'm still waiting on this commit. Uh, let's, uh, it's always a big thrill for me when this actually works. There it is, sweet, two for two. Um, so you'll see that there's now information shown about the, the submission, the, the push, uh, there's the commit message, and now I have an official score of 10 out of 100 on this MP check line. Down here, there is information about what happened during grading. And if there are discrepancies between your local score and your score when you submit, we have some information about how to fix that uh, that's up on the official MP walkthrough um, and up on some of our MP setup pages and things like that. We would also encourage uh, you to go through the output here because usually you can use this error. This is the output that was generated by the official grading process that, that, that was uh, took place on our server. And you can usually use this to figure out what happened. Um, okay. The other thing I'll point out is if I go back to my GitHub page and, and reload the page, now you'll see that there are two commits here, including the one that I just made, where I added my ID to the project. So it's that step of pushing, you know, not just committing. You can commit as much as you want locally. You can run the grade task as much as you want locally. Neither one of those things represents submitting your code for grading. Uh, to do that, you have to push to GitHub. Uh, once you push to GitHub, everything else happens automatically. Um, until you push to GitHub, nothing happens, right? And um, you know, we will uh, we'll provide like a, you know, a, we'll, we'll be sort of lenient about this, at least at the beginning, but by, you know, a few weeks in, we will be expecting you to push by the deadline. Now, the other thing is, it doesn't matter when you commit, you have to push. The timestamps that we as assign to your submissions, the timestamps that we use are not the timestamps when you committed, they're the timestamps when you pushed. And there's some technical reasons for that that I'm certainly happy to explain if you ask on the forum. But the idea here is that you have to push, right? You have to push before the deadline. Now, if you push right around deadline time, your push might not be graded for a couple of hours. That's okay, right? It's not when the grading finished. That's not the time stamp that matters. It's when did we receive your submission? So you have to push before that deadline. Okay, so I now have 10 out of 100 points on the MP. Super exciting. Um, I'm going to finish this up next because, you know, I, I have a good idea of kind of where to start and I've been seeing some of the code and I feel like I can use the output from the test suite to identify the problem with my code. Last note for those of you who are collaborating, both of you must submit individually. There are no joint submissions for the MP uh, for any checkpoint. So you're welcome to collaborate on MP0 and MP1, but you must push individually. Right, so you can share code with each other um, if you've uh, entered into a collaboration agreement for the MP, but you must submit the code individually. Each one of you must submit individually. Um, the reason for this is, is partly because for the last two checkpoints, MP2 and MP3, you'll be working individually. And so at that point, you'll really need to have your own copy of all the code. All right, good luck finishing up MP0.